Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition, and nobody expected Ford to agree to work with Tesla and use their plug on future vehicles. But that's what they did. CEO Jim Farley and the former Twitter CEO announced it on the platform. Late last year, Tesla made specs available and invited other OEMs to use their plug, now called NACS for North America Charging Standard. I- I'm shocked. Let's break down what this means and stick around for more Spanish Inquisition later in this video. In 2025, Ford will switch from CCS1 in North America to NACS. Now, I call it CCS1 because that's what it's called within the industry, because in Europe, everyone, including Ford and Tesla, uses CCS2. It's a different plug format. And in China, Ford will continue to use GBT, as does Tesla, for cars sold over there. Everyone uses GBT in China. It's just in North America that we have this two-plug problem. In North America, Ford will switch to NACS from CCS1. Tesla offered up their standard as a non-proprietary standard late last year. Honestly, I thought none of the other OEMs would say yes to Tesla, almost like a common front against the dominant EV manufacturer, and they'll just ask their customers to use two hands while charging. Next generation vehicles is what Ford says will use the NACS standard. That times up a well with what we expect to be their next generation F-150 Lightning called T3 or Trust the Truck. It will be manufactured in Blue Oval City. Expectations are that it would come out in 2025 calendar year as a 26 model year. So I believe what that's what they're referencing is that vehicle and everything else afterwards from Ford will use the NACS plug. Next generation EVs from Ford then would gain access to the supercharger network and be able to use it seamlessly. It will have the same plug as all the other Teslas does and will then have that seamless experience of using the supercharger network. Now, I assume they will still offer an adapter on these vehicles from CCS1 to Tesla. They already exist today, and Ford would be silly not to offer a version of it themselves for people who maybe just in their driving come across a CCS connector, but they have a different plug. For current Ford battery electric vehicles with that CCS connector, you'll be able to buy an adapter next spring to allow access to the Tesla supercharger network. That was the second part of the announcement, so you don't have to wait for next generation Fords to be able to use the Tesla supercharger network. You'll need to buy a Tesla to CCS adapter. Now, that currently exists in Tesla's stations that they've opened up via the Magic Dock. That's something, if you recall recently, Tesla's beginning to start opening up some of its supercharger network to non-Tesla vehicles. And to do so, they have this, what's called a Magic Dock, where you can pull out and select the CCS connector from the Tesla supercharger to put into a non-Tesla vehicle. Essentially, that's what you're gonna have to buy. It's not clear if you're gonna buy it from Ford, I assume so, or Tesla, are the two working on manufacturing that? Whatever the case, that's what you'll have to buy. Speaking of adapters, there is already a CCS to Tesla adapter, kind of the opposite what I'm talking about here. That would come in handy if you have a Tesla vehicle today and you want to use the CCS, next, the CCS network. There's also a J1772 to Tesla adapter, which is kind of the AC level one or level two charging version of that same adapter. The Blue Oval Network is what Ford has designed out to work in their in-vehicle HMI and in the Ford Pass app. That's a collection of roaming agreements they have with charging providers. Currently, they say they have 84,000 chargers in North America available to Ford customers. So through the app or through the touchscreen in their vehicle, about 10,000 of those are DC fast chargers. With this announcement, come spring of next year, Ford owners will have the option to buy that adapter and then they can have access to an additional 12,000 Tesla superchargers 
located throughout the country. Those are the two big takeaways from this announcement of Ford with Tesla. But let's go a little bit deeper. What does this mean for the NEVI program? That's the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure signed into law in 2021. It provides funding to build out a charging network of electric vehicles in America. The law calls for and mandates that the charging stations use CCS. They have the option to use other non-proprietary standards. So the money has been allocated to the states. It's now up to the states to actually implement this. So every state has a little different version of the same requirements. Each location needs to have at least four 150 kilowatt stations, each one with a CCS connector, and each one providing a 150 kilowatts for a total of 600 kilowatts. They can add additional stations per location, but they can't below, go below four, and they need to use the CCS connector. If I were running one of these states, I hope at this point they would add requirements that provide for Tesla NACS connectors. Given that Tesla is the best-selling electric vehicle in the United States, by far, they've been out there longer, so there's lots of vehicles on the road. And now you have Ford going forward saying, yeah, we're going to use that plug too. I mean, is it is it crazy to say that every station should be dual plugged? So one side is a CCS connector. The other side is NACS. You could see other combinations where maybe of the four stations at each location, three of them are that CCS slash Tesla connector station, and maybe one for Chatamo, which the Nissan Leaf uses, that's going away. So maybe states give up on that and just, I don't know, tell people to find other charging options. So that'll be interesting going forward, how this affects those requirements coming from the states. Going really nerdy and even deeper into payments and protocols, I'm going to assume that Ford will own payments for its customers. So if a Ford vehicle rolls up to the Tesla supercharger networks in the future, Ford would manage the transaction. That makes them the mobility service provider, the MSP or EMSP, and then they would pay Tesla for use of their supercharger network. That treats Tesla like the CPO, the charge point operator, and allows Ford's customers to use the Ford Pass app or the in-vehicle system on the sync touchscreen display in-vehicle. And this is gonna be interesting because one of the reasons why Tesla's network works so well, admittedly, is that you have one company interpreting all these industry standards. When you have multiple companies all interpreting the same sets of standards, it creates variation. And so it's going to be interesting to watch, does this introduce some new problems with the Tesla supercharger network? Because now you at least have one other company interpreting the same standards. By comparison, the CCS network that's being built out amongst all the providers you've probably heard of, they are all working to the same industry standards, but you have different companies and different interpretations of it. Yes, the rules are written down, but there's always some introduction of how the rules are interpreted that you learn over time. It's worth noting that Ford CEO Jim Farley, I, I almost called him Chris Farley there, but no, Jim Farley, uh, said that this will not obsolete their current charging hardware. So let's take a look at that. For home charging, Ford offers Ford Connected Charging. So it has the if it's a level one or level two, it has the J1772 plug. That's what they offer. Going forward, if you're a Ford customer and you've installed that in your house, I guess you would have to either get new hardware, but they'll probably offer that adapter so you don't have to throw away your hardware, but it is going to create some transition period. Additionally, Ford offers Ford Pro Charging for its fleet customers, and that's a really big business for Ford. Ford wants to continue to own that space going forward as the transition happens to electrification. That charging hardware can also work through an adapter, but it's going to create weird situations. I mean, imagine if you were a fleet operator, you have a bunch of Ford e-transits, maybe some Mercedes e-sprinters mixed in. 
They're all using the CCS connector. They're all using J1772. If you're doing it at a slower speed using AC level one or level two. And now the newest Fords that roll into your fleet have the Tesla NACS connector. I guess you'll just have to have an adapter. Again, adapters are gonna play a big role in this going forward. The last thing to consider is what is Ford gonna do with its PHEVs, its plug-in hybrid electric vehicles? I don't expect a flood of PHEVs from Ford. One option could be that they just let these current vehicles like the Ford Escape, and there's also a Lincoln model that offers a plug-in hybrid powertrain. They could just let these vehicles ride off into the sunset using the J1772. If they have some new plug-in hybrids on the books, they may wanna consider switching to NACS because that would make it a consistent experience across the Ford lineup. We'll have to see how that transpires, but again, I don't expect Ford to be coming out with a lot more PHEVs. They and most other OEMs are focused on battery electrics, not an interim step of plug-in hybrids. This is just the beginning. I think the big question is, will another OEM join Ford in adopting NACS in their North American vehicles? That would be huge. This announcement now does catch it at a time where it's not too late to reconsider how this money is being funded and what our charging infrastructure looks like going forward. I, I really think this doesn't kill CCS, but it's just gonna require us to solidify a two plug system in North America. It's, it seems like it's inevitable. It's gonna be interesting. If you're interested in this subject and wanna get informed of the latest developments, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate it. And if you give it a like, that'd be great too. Thanks for watching. Nobody expects Ford and Tesla to work together. Our chief weapon is a Tesla plug, the plug and their superchargers. Our two, two weapons are the plugs and the superchargers and the adapters. Three, three weapons are the plugs, the superchargers, the adapters, and an almost fanatical devotion to Elon Musk. Our four amongst our chief weapons. Let me come in again.